Well, uh, Ariel spoke of horrific images. Last Thursday, after that Palestinian terrorist opened fire and killed three Israelis at that bar, TV viewers here were treated to a rare bit of television. Live coverage of the door-to-door -door search for the attackers with the cameras right at the backs of the soldiers and police officers as they comb through the buildings. It was thrilling coverage, like watching a live, real-life episode of the series Fauda. But less, filled with the, less thrilled with the Israeli police, IDF, and Shin Bet security agency, who issued a public letter criticizing reporters for interfering with the search and broadcasting potentially classified information. Today in Parliament, a joint session of the Public Security and Economics Committees held a meeting on the issue, and Communications Minister Yoas Handel said it had been a mistake not to close off the area of the attack to media. And joining us in the studio, our senior correspondent, Owen Altman. A lot of debate about that coverage Thursday night of that attack, Owen. Yeah, and it's a fascinating debate. And just so viewers abroad understand, particularly those who are not Hebrew speakers, it's impossible, I think, in, in a short segment like this one to really capture the magnitude of what happened. Coverage that went on for hour after hour after hour of this manhunt. You got a taste of it on your screen just a second ago, that, that camera level footage of going with the security forces around buildings in the back of buildings, up and down the stairs, knocking on doors. Really the reporters along with the police officers, you could see the adrenaline rush that the reporters and the cameramen did, did have there on the scene. Of course, after the adrenaline rush of Thursday night came the hangover of Friday morning after this coverage. Of course, it was, it, was, it was fantastic TV in a sense, but obviously Kalev riddled with problems, prompting Israel's Channel 12 News to issue this statement through its anchor, Danny Kushmaro, on its flagship Friday night newscast. Let's hear what Danny Kushmaro had to say. It's important to note that the broadcast last night was accompanied, as usual, by the military sensor that sits here behind a window through the entire broadcast. At no stage did we broadcast images that were disallowed by the sensor. When we were asked by the police representatives to move away from the scene, we did so. But in spite of that, we at the news company conducted lengthy discussions that will continue into the coming days in order to reach conclusions from last night's broadcast, how to improve, what not to do. We at Channel 12 News do not intend to let ourselves off easy. So, Kalev, there are two separate but obviously related questions. The first is where to draw the line, right? Where to draw the line between what the reporters and cameramen should be doing and what they shouldn't be doing. I think almost the more fascinating question is the who question. Who should be drawing the line, right? And you just heard it in that statement from Danny Kushmaro. Should it be the authorities, the military censor he referred to, the IDF, the Shin Benton police who wrote that letter after the fact, right? Not during the event, but after the fact. Should they be the ones setting the limits? Or is it really up to journalists and to news organizations themselves when they understand that there is a vacuum to be able to step in and restrain themselves? On the one hand, journalists have an obligation to cover the event, to uncover the truth, to give the viewer the, as, as much information as they can. On the other hand, there are obvious sensitivities here in terms of showing methods and showing the, actually the identities of some of these figures and some of the fighters who are often confidential. Right, I just want to clarify, we saw, uh, for example, the faces of soldiers and officers in elite uh, commando units in the army and police that are usually censored. That are right, and so when there's an obvious vacuum in a very, very unique event, and this was, after all, in a unique event of this manhunt in Tel Aviv, who is it that should be stepping into the breach? Is it all up to the authorities or do journalists have a role to restrain themselves? I think a fascinating question of journalism ethics that I think will be studied, frankly, beyond the borders of Israel for a long time to come. Right, and it's gonna be debated, especially as, of course, we're in the midst of an ongoing, these ongoing terror incidents, and certainly this will come up again. Owen Altman, thank you for that.